Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with Max Stadium coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Plex. Now, uh, in the previous screencast that I did, I talked about how to set up your uh, media files and then how to upload them to your server hosted at Max Stadium. Uh, if you haven't seen that screencast yet, you may want to go back and take a look at it uh, because I'll be working off of that uh, the premise of how we set up that uh, data uh, as we go ahead and install the Plex Media Server. So here we are on my uh, server hosted at Max Stadium and you can see here's my documents folder and there is my media folder. And so inside there is all of the different files and things that I uploaded and it's all in the format uh, that I had set them up so that Plex can more easily read them and pull the metadata for the information that we've got. So I just wanted to show you that the information did get up there and everything's fine uh, inside the finder. So let me just uh, put this down here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pull up uh, the web browser here. We're going to go take a look at Plex. And so, again, to get at the Plex website, it's just plex.tv, and so here's their interface for Plex. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and download Plex, go into the uh, downloads area here on their website. And as you can see, we've got the Plex Media Server here, and they've got a few other things that you can download as well. Uh, mobile apps and uh, Plex for TV, home theater. But what we want is we want the one right here, uh, the Media Server, for the computer because we're downloading it to our Mac Mini. So I'm just going to uh, tap on that. And so again, it says, uh, do you want to download for Mac, Windows, Linux, FreeBSD? Uh, depending on what you're running, uh, most of you on your Mac Mini server will be running Mac. So I'm just going to download that. And so as you can see, it's now downloading the Plex Media Server. And so once it's uh, finished downloading, I'll go ahead and launch it and we'll install Plex. Okay, so the download has completed. So let me just go in here. Uh, up top here, you can see we've got the Media Server. I'm just going to tap on this and bring up a Finder window. And so let me just, uh, let's just close Safari down here. All right, so there we are. So we've got the Plex Media Server right there. So what we want to do is drag it into the Applications folder, just like that, and go into the Applications folder, find Plex Media Server, and launch it for the first time. Just double-click it. And it will actually launch the Plex Media Server. So let me close this down, and let's go ahead and open it. And once it opens, you can see at the top it says that it's starting, and you've got the little uh, the Chevron icon there, which is there for Plex. And so now it's installed. It's right up here and it lives up here in your menu bar. So all you need to do is just, uh, if you click on the Chevron, you'll notice a couple of things. We've got a uh, preferences area here. We've also got the ability to open it at login and this will add it to your startup items so that every time you have to restart your server, then Plex will come up. So you probably want to go ahead and set this because uh, you're going to be accessing it remotely. You don't want to have to log in to remember to launch Plex every time. So we're just going to click this open at login. So that's all set. You'll notice we've got a media manager, which I'll show you in a minute. We've got uh, update library. So if you want to update the library, uh, you've made some changes, you want to make sure the updates happen, you would uh, click on that. Uh, and a check for updates and uh, about and quit. All right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to launch the media server here because this is where we manage all of the information we've got in Plex. It's kind of like a dashboard for Plex. And so here we go. We've launched the uh, media server, and this is it. This is the uh, dashboard uh, that we have for Plex. You'll notice that we've got a My Library area here, and we've got a Channels area. Then we've got this Sign In area here. Uh, that would be for a My Plex uh, account, which uh, I'll go ahead and uh, sign you up. We'll get signed up for that in a minute. And then you've got your announcements uh, down here that, uh, that scroll by. So what we'll do first is uh, let's go ahead and uh, just go ahead and sign up for a MyPlex account. Uh, we're going to come in here uh, actually to settings and we're going to go to, um, to Plex Media Server and then we're going to come over here to MyPlex. And in here you'll enter a username and email and a password and that will set you up for an account. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there right now. Okay, now that I've got my information in there, I'm just going to click sign up. And it's going to create a MyPlex account. You can see that I'm signed in and it's connecting me to the server right now. Okay, so now it's uh, finished. You can see that we're signed in. Uh, the server is mapping to the right port. Uh, now you may need to uh, tick this uh, manually specify port. Uh, you might get an error if you don't. Uh, I've had this uh, happen to me before. So just go ahead and uh, go ahead and tick that right there. 
and you should be all set. And it looks like everything is mapping the way that we want it to. So let's go back home uh, just so we can take a look at this. And you'll notice the login is gone now because we're already signed in. If I come up here, uh, I can just uh, click on this and you can see that my account uh, is up there. I have the option now to sign out. Uh, I can go into my account. Uh, recommendations, queue things up and all that. I'll go into a little bit more detail on that when I talk specifically about MyPlex, but I thought I'd get us signed in so that that part's taken care of. And we'll go through some of the other features and things in the configuration as well. Okay, let's start by uh, taking a look at the different components we have here inside Plex. We've got the library and channels area. And so let's start with the library area by adding some uh, of our information here. So we just click the little plus button here to add a section. And you'll notice that all of the sections kind of correspond to the folders that I set up earlier. Remember, I set up a movies, a TV shows, and a home movies uh, folder. Now, if uh, you're watching the screencast and haven't seen the first in this series, you might want to go back and take a look at that, where I talk about how to prepare your media for Plex so that it can read it and pull the metadata uh, a little bit easier. So let's start by setting up a movies uh, section here. And what we're going to do is add a folder. So we need to go browse to that folder. So it's in media here. And there's our movie folder. And we're going to add it. And so we'll just uh, click Save, and it's going to now save the information. And as you can see right now, it's saved uh, the information, and it's quickly already pulled in the, uh, the different uh, movie posters, and it's done it accurately. These are the movies that I've added, and it's added all of this great metadata to uh, what I've got there. Now you can see the little uh, gear is still moving here. It's still refreshing uh, the information, which means it's still adding it. So I'm going to let it do that, and we're just going to go back, and we're going to take a look at uh, adding another section here. So let's just click the plus again, and uh, we'll just keep doing this for each section. Uh, the next one is TV shows. If you remember, I had TV shows that I added. So the same thing's true here. We're going to add a folder to this. Again, it's in documents, uh, in the media area here, and then TV shows. And so we're going to add that, and then we'll save it. And so now it's added the TV shows. And again, you can see there's a, uh, the TV show that I had in my folder. It's added that one in. And it's still pulling down the information from it. So I'm going to go back again. And you'll notice that as I've added these sections, now they're available up here. And you also notice that the recently added is already down here as well. And that's kind of a nice feature too, because you can see what you just put in there uh, and gives you kind of a fresh view of it. So you have all that information. So let's add one more section based on what I had in there before. And that was home movies. And again, we're going to add the folder. And so you can see that if you have good organization in the first place, uh, it really is uh, efficient in Plex and really helps you set it up in the way that you uh, can use it most effectively. So there's Home Movies. We're going to add that and save it. And again, this was the one on, uh, you know, cats. I had a couple cats there. So you can see it's pulled down uh, the information from these two movies. Again, it's still updating the information. But if I go back, there's the two recent things that we've added right there. So that's how you add sections. You just go through that process of uh, adding those things in there. And uh, I'll show you a little bit more. Like, let's, uh, let's click into movies for a second. And you can see here's the different movies I had. And if I just uh, click on a movie, you can see it brings it in, and it's pulled up all of this metadata. It's given me the movie, not only the movie poster, uh, but the name. It's given me the rating. Uh, it even says Marvel over here. It's got, uh, it's got the actual size of it. It's a 480p movie and 5.1 surround. The director, all this information. And I didn't have to do anything. I just put the right name on the, fo on the fo uh, file and put it in the folder. Uh, there's some other information on the side that you can work on to edit, but I'm going to do that in another uh, screencast to show you how you can edit things if it doesn't quite come out right for you. So let's just uh, click back and back one more time. Let's look at the TV shows too now that those are done. Uh, you can see that with TV shows, it shows you how many episodes you have inside there. So if you click on it, and you can see here it is. I've got uh, these four episodes in here. When I click on that, notice that it's even named the actual names of the episodes on here. So I've got that information in there uh, right away. And these little orange dots here just show the things that I haven't viewed yet. So it even keeps track of that information. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like and how great this is. It even pulls the background uh, cover art as well, so it displays really nicely. And as you'll see with some of the clients, that uh, really comes into play uh, and really makes Plex shine when you're on big screens. So, Now, one more section we've got is channels down here. You'll notice that I've got iTunes on here. That's because I've got iTunes open. And Plex does go out and pull information from your iTunes library. And so if I just uh, click on this, I've got uh, my artist, all my information in here. And this is the one, I just put one song in there uh, from this album. And you can see that it's just drilling right into my iTunes library. 
uh, and allows me to have access to all of that uh, right through Plex. So you really can use Plex for all of your different uh, media, uh, movies, TV shows, uh, music, even photos. Uh, and I'll show you how that works uh, in another screencast. But here you go with the channels. If I just click a plus here, I can add more channels. And you see I have things like uh, the Apple movie trailers. Uh, so let's add that channel. I just uh, click install. And it's going to go now and install uh, the actual movie trailers. And you can see that now it's already successfully installed it. If I ever want to uninstall it, I can come in here. And so you can see by the check mark, I've got that installed now. Uh, I can take a look at all kinds of different channels. You got what's new. Uh, if, I, if I click on that and you see uh, there's a Yahoo channel. I mean, so it's got all of these internet channels uh, that you can add. Let's go ahead and install that one just to put that on there. It's got all these internet channels that you can add to just sort of customize Plex uh, to the things that you normally watch. And if I just, uh, once I, since I've done that, let's go back now to the main screen. And you can see now these channels have been added. And so I've got these different channels that I can view now. And you can see I've been able to start to customize Plex uh, to really make it, uh, turn it into what I want it to be with my media and the different channels. So that kind of gives you an overview of how Plex works. Uh, what we're going to do in uh, a future screencast is I'm going to show you how to work with all of the different settings, how to edit uh, your various TV shows and different items inside Plex so that you can get it tuned just to where you want it to be. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the clients that you can install uh, to access this remotely. Since this is being hosted at Mac Stadium, you can access this remotely through your computers, uh, your TVs, uh, and your I iOS or uh, mobile devices. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac in a hosted environment.